everyone welcome back to my channel dental cafe if you are new to my channel then don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the latest video so uh, today we are going to discuss about the clasp in orthodontic and this is part 2 and part 1 was already discussed okay then let's begin the video adim class was already discussed now begin with the c class so what is c class it is also known as three quarter clasp or circumferential clasp they are very simple clasp and engage bucco cervical undercut look at the figure we have a c shaped clasp and this is an occlusal view of the c class and in, in next figure we have a buccal view of the c clasp and now the advantages and disadvantages of c clasp advantages it it is easy to construct simple design as you can see in the figure prevent mesial migration of tooth and disadvantage is it cannot be used in partially erupted uh, teeth because it engage the uh, bucco cervical undercut so in partially erupted uh, teeth it cannot be used this clasp is jackson clasp also known as full clasp or u clasp was introduced by jackson and hence named so this clasp makes use of bucco cervical undercut and also the mesial and distal proximal under cut c clasp only engage bucco cervical undercut and jackson clasp engage bucco cervical plus mesial and distal proximal under cut look at the clasp this clasp is u in shape and hence called u shape clasp this is a buccal view and in another figure we are showing a occlusal view of the clasp now the advantages and disadvantages of jackson clasp advantages simple to construct and offers adequate retention as compared to c clasp as it is uh, engaging um, mesial and distal undercut too the disadvantage inadequate retention in partially erupted teeth then the next clasp is delta clasp this clasp was designed by William J. Clark and this clasp is, a clasp is similar to Adam's clasp in principle. It engages interdental undercut. As you can see in the figure, we have an occlusal view of the delta clasp showing how the clasp is engaging an interdental undercut. In the next figure, we have a buccal view of the clasp. This clasp is southern clasp. It provides retention in interior region. It means this clasp is used, in, uh, used only in interior uh, region of the jaw. Then wire is adapted along the cervical margin of both the central incisors. The distal end of the wire cross over the occlusal embrasures and end as retentive arm on the palatal sides. Look at the figure. We have a buccal view of the clasp showing cervical margin and a retentive arm and in the next figure we have a occlusal view showing how it engage across the occlusal embrasures and ends on the palatal surface of the central incisors as a retentive arm then we have a advantages of clasp better patient compliance and suitable for rotated and spaced incisors so they are basically used in rotated and spaced incisors. This is an anterior class. This class is only used in the anterior region of the tooth. And it occupies the occlusal embrasures and ends on the palatal surface of the central incisors. Act as a retentive arm. Now we have a triangular class. As the name suggests, it is triangular in shape. It has a small triangular shape that engages the proximal undercut of two adjacent teeth. It provides excellent retention. It does not cause irritation of gingiva and it is used when additional retention is required. So we cannot use triangular clasp individually. We can use 
this class in association with other class if we require an additional uh, if additional retention is required okay now try to understand with the figures we have a buckle view of the clasp as you can see in the figure the clasp is roughly triangular in shape not exactly but somewhat triangular in shape and hence named so and in the next figure you can see it engages the proximal under cut so the triangular clasp is used when the uh, extra retention is required this clasp is ball and clasp this clasp is also known as shoe anchor clasp this clasp has a ball at one end which engages the proximal undercut between two adjacent teeth it means uh, this clasp engages the interdental area this clasp is used whenever additional retention is required same as the triangular clasp look at the figure we have buckle view of the uh, ball and clasp as you can see in the figure at the one end of one end of the clasp we have a ball and hence named so and in the second figure we have a occlusal view of the clasp showing the clasp is engaging proximal undercut to provide additional retention same as the triangular clasp triangular clasp is also engaging the proximal undercut now the next clasp is double ball and clasp this clasp includes a stamp embedded into and extent extending from the acrylic portion of the appliance two ball clasp extend from the stamp and are laterally spaced apart from one another mean in in double and ball clasp we have a two ball connected each other by a stamp this clasp does not exert any wedging force in the interdental embrasures like single ball clasp and this clasp provides better retention as compared to the single ball and clasp look at the figure we have a double ball clasp with two ball connected each other with the help of the stamp next we have a swarz clasp a clasp has a number of arrow heads that engages the interproximal undercut of posterior teeth mean this clasp has not only one have two maybe three maybe four arrow head that engages the interproximal undercut of the posterior teeth as you can see in the figure we have a two arrow head in a schwaz clasp engaging interproximal undercut the advantages of clasp this clasp has a number of arrowhead that engage the interproximal undercut of the posterior teeth and provide extra retention not interrupted the unerupted tooth or the primary teeth as it engages the interproximal undercut so it will not uh, affect the unerupted tooth or the primary teeth then we have a disadvantages of clasp it need special arrowhead forming pliers it occupies a large amount of space in buccal vestibule as you can see to form a arrowhead we require a arrowhead forming pliers and occupies the interdental area so they cover the more space in the buccal vestibule rest on interdental area so it may injure the interdental soft tissues and it is difficult and time consuming to fabricate as compared to the c clasp or the other clasp uh, which are simple to fabricate we have a crosset clasp this clasp was suggested by the crosset in 1920 and it is a modification of jackson clasp an additional piece of wire is soldered to the jackson clasp which engages into the mesial and distal proximal under cuts and does it provide better retention than full clasp look at the figure and try to understand as you can see in the figure an additional piece of wire is soldered to a jackson clasp to engage the mesial and distal proximal under cut and it provide better retention than the triangular or the other clasp um now just a brief uh, introduction about the rarely used clasp first one is the dusing clasp advantages 
possible to use only one half of the class one half may be made to extend fully to the interior or posterior part of the tooth and the disadvantage is provide limited retention and accumulation of debris is more common in this type of clasp the uh, figure this is a buckle view of the clasp now we have a eyelid clasp this clasp can be constructed as a single eyelid or continuous eyelid clasp eyelid is made using a young loop forming plier eyelid are placed in the embrasures the size of the eyelid depends on the width of the interdental area of both anchor teeth look at the figure uh, we have a buckle view of the clasp showing eyelid which is placed in the embrasure so its size is depend upon the size of the embrasure and in next figure we have a occlusal view now the advantages and disadvantages of eyelid clasp probability of breaking is very low and not interrupt the tooth eruption disadvantages require special plier and then occupies more space and hard to adjust next we have a plint clasp also known as flyover clasp plint clasps are useful when using a removable appliance in combination with a fixed appliance this clasp is used to engage under the tube assembly on a molar band adjustment by moving the clasp under the molar tube look at the figure we have a buckle and occlusal view of the clasp and we have a molar tube and the clasp is adjusted in this molar tube the next we have a visic clasp and the clasp was given by the h c visic this clasp is used on palatal side for active retention accompanying the base plate and molar clasp on buccal side retention is increased with this clasp because both the buccal and the palatal surfaces are engaged look at the figure we have a buccal and the occlusal view of the visic clasp now the important topic for the competitive exam they will ask adams clasp in detail and all other clasp are asked as a image based question so you should uh, know the images of the clasp i hope this video is helpful for you thank you for watching and do like share and subscribe my youtube channel